Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of Schindler Students Virtual. I uh, hope everything's going well for everybody. Uh, hopefully, uh, I think most of y'all should be either done or wrapping up school for, for this school year, so that's exciting. Uh, even though the end of the school year is looking a little bit different, obviously, this year, uh, but that's still exciting getting to uh, to the end and wrapping that up. A uh, couple reminders here at the top for you. Um, number one is remember that this Sunday, this coming Sunday, May 24th, uh, we are doing Grad Sunday, okay? So um, for you seniors, obviously you should be there. You've been getting information from me. If you're not a senior, come out and uh, still support our, our seniors, show up and show them how much we, uh, we love and care about them. Uh, let's uh, let's send them off right, okay. Especially the the way this this school year is going. Let's let's make Sunday really special for them, okay. Second thing is summer camp. As of now, we're still same old same thing I've been saying. As of now, we're still moving forward, um, expecting camp to happen, okay. So basically, until further nor until further notice, we're moving forward, expecting expecting camp to happen. Uh, everybody at, up at Snowbird is working really hard to uh, make that happen for us um, and uh, and so hopefully Lord willing keep praying that, that everything moves forward as expected and we're able to go to summer camp make sure that you go on and register okay you everybody should have, if you're going to camp you should have gotten a, uh, a letter in the mail in the last like week or so I think I sent that out um, and uh, in part of that letter it went out to your parents as part of that letter it had the link for registering make sure you go on and register for camp this week. Okay, you got to go on there and do that. Make sure you go register for camp. Okay, and if you're if you're under 18, your parents have to fill it out. If you're 18, you can fill it out yourself. Okay, um, but if you're if you're under 18, your parents gotta gotta fill it out. But make sure you get that in this week. Okay. Um, so this week I just want to share uh, uh, just a couple really quick thoughts um, from this week's Gospel Project lesson, which is out of John chapter three, which is where Nicodemus comes to Jesus. And um, he, he comes to him to have a conversation, and he comes to Jesus at night. Okay, so Nicodemus, he's this guy who is, he's a well-known uh, Pharisee, and he was kind of, he's like this really prominent teacher and ruler uh, in, the, in the Jewish community in Israel. So um, he, he hears about Jesus, and he, he says, I want to have a conversation with this guy, because he's hearing what Jesus is doing and what he's teaching. And he says, I got I to gotta go have a conversation with Jesus. But he doesn't want everybody else to know. right? He's, he's one of the Pharisees, which if you, if you remember from the Gospels, the Pharisees don't like Jesus very much, right? And so Nicodemus is like, if I, to, I don't want everybody else to know that I'm going to hang out with, with Jesus. So he, he goes to Jesus at night so that, that nobody knows that, right? But if, even though he's going at night and he's being, being kind of secretive about it, there's a couple things that, that kind of stand out to me. Um, about Nicodemus going to Jesus that, that I think we can learn. Um, the first thought is Nicodemus recognizes that there's something about Jesus. There's something missing that he can't find anywhere else other than going to Jesus. He recognizes there's something that I can't find anywhere else that this guy's got. And whenever he comes to Jesus, it's evident that he doesn't know exactly what that is that that he's missing but he's like there's something going on where th that jesus has got that that i need and i can't find it anywhere else and so he 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 makes a point where he intentionally seeks out jesus right so the question for you guys is do you recognize hey there's something missing where th th there's something that is fulfilling and satisfying that i can't find anywhere else i i can only find that in going to spend time with jesus right do you recognize that and so then are you taking the next step to intentionally have that time with with Jesus, where you're going to spend time with Jesus to get that thing that you can't, to get that that fulfillment that you can't find anywhere else, right? Are you doing that on a daily basis in, in prayer and Bible study, spending time with Jesus, right? For me personally, if on on days where I miss that, where where I don't make a point of of having my quiet time and I miss it for whatever reason, when that happens, it it hugely affects the rest of my day in a very negative way right and and so we need to recognize that there's something that we can only find there that we're not going to be able to find anywhere else and it's something that is necessary for us to have right so do you recognize that and are you seeking that out right nicodemus recognized that there was something with jesus that he couldn't find anywhere else secondly is when nicodemus did make a point to go into jesus 
he got a very different response from Jesus than what he was expecting. Right? If you if you read at the, at the very beginning of, of chapter three, Nicodemus comes up to Jesus and and he starts into he, he kind of starts like flattering Jesus, right? He's he's kind of like, hey, so uh, I, I've heard all these great things you're doing, um, and you, you know you, everybody's talking about your teaching and and what you're doing, and and da da da. And it's kind of it kind of sounds like Nicodemus is coming up. He's kind of wanting wanting to have kind of this academic like colleague to colleague conversation with Jesus like like almost like two college professors talking about like really like over the top heady things it's almost like that's the kind of conversation that he's wanting and then Jesus kind of comes out of left field and the first thing that he says to Nicodemus is you must be born again and it catches Nicodemus off guard and that's what leads into the rest of the conversation and so Nicodemus gets a very different response from what he's expecting from Jesus he, whenever he, he comes to Jesus, he's wanting to just kind of have this academic conversation. And Jesus cuts through all that. And he goes to, okay, yeah, all that's great, but he, what's going on with you? What, what, he's cutting to, to the heart issue of what's going on personally with Nicodemus, right? He's not saying, hey, we're not going to talk about all these like stuff where we can just kind of like talk distantly about this. I'm cutting straight in close to what is the heart issue going on with you right now, right? So that's what Jesus does, right? So whenever you are coming to Jesus to spend time with him, understand that sometimes whenever we do that, we hear from Jesus in a very different way than what we were expecting, right? And and what I mean by that is not that you open up your Bible and then all of a sudden Jesus speaks audibly. That's not what I'm talking about, about it, it being unexpected, when I say unexpected is you may come to your Bible and be like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to read my Bible today. And da, 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 I think I just need this from the, from the Bible. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit might start convicting you about, Hey, there's a sin issue that's going on. This thing that you just kind of want to keep hidden. You don't want, you don't want to talk about, but I'm bringing it to the surface and I'm convicting you about this because it needs dealt with. Right. And he's convicting us about that. And sometimes that, that comes out of nowhere and it's not comfortable. Right. I can guarantee you probably Nicodemus was probably not very comfortable with the way that this conversation went because it was cutting to, to, to conviction that was going on in, in his heart. And Jesus cut to that, not in a way to condemn, but to convict. Right. There's a there's a difference between convicting the Holy Spirit, convicting us and condemning us. Right. The difference is conviction is where you're pointing out something that need, that's that's wrong and needs to fix. Condemnation when we're condemned is where you're trying to you're trying to heap on shame because of that, right? Holy Spirit doesn't do that. He convict he points out what needs dealt with, but not in a way to shame us. He points it out so that that he can heal us from that. So he so we can deal with that sin issue and be healed from it and 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 move forward in a way that's more fulfilling and more satisfying, right? And actually, later later on in the chapter, everybody knows John three sixteen, right? Well, the next verse, John three seventeen, is where Jesus actually says, "I didn't come into the world to condemn, but to save." Right? So he he's he's pinpointing what's going on at the heart issue of Nicodemus, but at the same time, he's saying, "I'm not doing this to condemn you. I'm doing this because you need saved from from what's going on." Right? So the Holy Spirit's going to convict us. So so number one, just like Nicodemus recognize that there is something more fulfilling and satisfying that we can't find anywhere else other than going to spend time with Jesus. And secondly, whenever we do that, whenever we go spend that time with Jesus, just like Nicodemus, we may have something come up that's that's unexpected where the Holy Spirit convicts us of, hey, I know you don't want to deal with this thing right now. You don't, you, you've got this sin issue going on that you just kind of want to keep suppressed. You don't want to talk about it, but I'm bringing it to the surface because I want to heal you from that because you suppressing it is not going to solve anything. But I'm going to solve it right now. I'm going to bring it to the surface so that we can deal with it. And sometimes that comes up and it's unexpected. Don't run from that, right? It's very easy to, to want to run from that and avoid it and be like, nah, I don't, want, I don't want to deal with that, right? But the correct response is to recognize that Jesus is doing that to heal us of that and and to to deal with that with that sin issue right or whatever it, it may be right jesus a lot of times speaks to us in very unexpected ways that that we're not anticipating but we want to embrace that and and press into that and deal with those issues and let him work in our lives to heal us of those things so that we can fight against sin constantly okay so uh hopefully that's encouraging for you guys take that and apply it to uh your quiet time this week um 
and uh, hopefully I get to see you guys on Sunday, and hopefully in four weeks, get to see you guys when we're getting on a bus to go to Snowbird, all right? So keep praying about that to happen, Lord willing, uh, that's how the next uh, month will go, and uh, I'll see you guys later. See you.